Hockey showing up a couple minutes late. Jason, you want to lead us off in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. What's the first budget review? I don't know if we have minutes to review also. We'll do that. We'll probably do that at the end. Okay. Before we go into the convention. Ken, you're up. You want to talk us through the third quarter budget? Well, I would. Second quarter, excuse me. Second quarter. Second quarter. Absolutely. <coughs> would you start with expenditures or revenue? Whichever you prefer. All right. Um, ex expenditures. Uh, as you'll see, uh, everything looks pretty well uh, in line. We do have uh, some overages in overtime, uh, especially in, in, uh, in nursing. Uh, we went through to the nursing home. Uh, Page 11. Okay. <clears throat> um, as you see, it's at 81 percent. Um, I did an analysis over the past several years, and um, uh, last year was a good year for overtime, uh, but it seems that we're starting to go back up again in the overtime. Uh, and I, if Howie can answer some of those questions, maybe uh, uh, he can answer oh. any of those questions. Um, Good morning, Howie. Good morning, Leo. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Um, what, what I have, and I can distribute these if you want, but what we have when we look at the nursing payroll, uh, we were, we're definitely high in overtime at 81%, but overall with the payroll items that include overtime, salary, salary and LNAs, charge nurse, and agency staff, we're at a total of 48.4%. So we're 1.6% under for payroll, but the distribution isn't, has not yet gone as we planned. So that we're, when we're high on one, we end up being uh, right now at only 45% on salary of, of LNA. So overall, we're still on the budget for a nursing payroll. So open any questions you might have about that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just what's the reason why the overtime is shortages. Shortages. So we have open positions, we have some unfilled positions so that we rely before we turn to outside, the agency, we'd rather see our own people get overtime. It's better for them and a little bit less expensive. So we've, we've been hired while we have the open position. Now, having said that, the, the, the reason for the vacancies is, is twofold. Needing to fill positions and also unscheduled absences, sick calls. We're looking as late as last week at new, new software that right now when we look at overtime, we're looking at it through a rear view mirror. We see what last payroll was. The software that we're looking at allows us to forecast it. Based on, it would give the nurse scheduling. Um, it would give Jen the ability, when she books somebody, to know whether it's going to put, her, put them into overtime to be able to offer the positions to people who would not, not need overtime. So we're looking aggressively for how to minimize it, even with the workforce we have, but we're also, with the addition of a, of a new staff advocate, we're getting very involved with aggressive recruiting, so we're hoping to fill the existing positions too. So we're we're, we're not we're not going to we would rather balance it by getting overtime where it belongs and getting regularly scheduled up to where it belongs. Thank you. Okay. Karen. Uh, how many vacant positions do you currently have? The in terms of full time equivalents, it would probably turn out to be somewhere in the order of seven or eight. Yes, are these nurses or LPNs or what? Uh, about two would be nurses and in the balance, about five would be uh, LNAs. If I could learn sure. 
It was, it was my understanding that the reason that we went to um, outside people was because we could not um, convince or we were having too much overtime. And also that uh, at one time we were told that the outside people were actually less expensive than, uh, that's what we were told, okay, uh, less expensive and more reliable. And so I'm just trying to understand what the, uh, what's changed. Well, and, and your point is, is, is well taken. There are two kinds of essentially agency staff. There's the regular agency where we call up today and ask for somebody for tonight. That's very expensive. But what Lori has been able to do is when we know we're going to have a vacancy to bring in, in a hospital setting and be called local tenants, we are actually contract with somebody for 6, 8 to 12 weeks. And they bring somebody in for full time during that period. That ends up being comparable, about the same, sometimes a little bit less, always less than agency, and sometimes about the same as, as overtime. So we, we use those when we can. Primarily, we use that for night, a full-time night position for nursing during the summer. But we're still with agency, short-term agency is expensive. And overtime is never the desired way to go. It's not the, it's not the best way, but until the positions are filled. Now, we do have a new, we do have a, a, a new staff advocate, and her expertise is actually in recruiting. So we're expecting to, 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 be, to be filling positions um, better than we have in the past. But even problems and all, where we've still been under budget. Yes. One second. Howie, do you need to ask for a line item transfer so you'll trouble making uh, payroll? Uh, we're going to at some point. We don't need to right now. But, but for the for the sometime in the third quarter where we are now, we are going to in order to balance these um, five line items, we're going to have to have some transfers. But it won't be additional money, and it won't be from operations. It'll be all within payroll accounts. Glenn, thank you, um, Mr. Chair and Vice Chair. Uh, I just heard mentioned a new staff advocate position. Mm -hmm. uh, can you fill us in on that? Because I don't remember anything about that in the budget. Uh, yes, as you remember, um, uh, Representative Marsh was was an advocate for us to to hire a person over there to help help staff with their payroll issues, with their checks. So I do remember a half-time half -time benefits person. That's what this is. Okay. Um, would there be a job description available, possibly? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Bill? Thank you. Thank you. Does this expenses for overtime include any of the things you have to pay for a normal or regular employee, for example, sick time and all that? Does it end up when you work that all out, it's cheaper to do somebody via agency? It's, it's always cheaper than agency, but it's still 50% more on an hourly basis than it might necessarily need to be. But if you rolled in the benefits and all these, all, all these other things, in there, does, it make, does that bring the price? Uh, a regular employee higher? Well, it, is what I can tell you is I didn't include it in this payroll analysis, but under medical insurance, the, the amount that we're, we pay for medical insurance for our staff for the, for the, for the six months year for, through the second quarter, that's under budget by $85,000. And that's not included here. So when, when we end up using overtime, when we end up using agency, when we end up using the local tenants, we're not paying medical insurance. So we're reducing some other expenses in between. It's still not optimum. It's still not the, the best way, but it does reflect a significant savings. We've also had a problem in the past, thanks to the Affordable Care Act, where we were we, we need to cap our per diem, our non-benefited staff, from working more than 30 hours in a week, on average. Because if they went over 30 hours, even though they had no fixed schedule, they would be entitled to, to health care insurance. We're hoping that, that we're going to be seeing some relief from that requirement in short order, so that instead of working, it's, it's, it's 30 hours isn't even a full four shifts, instead of working three and a half shifts, that they'll be able to expand back to five shifts, and that'll help fill the gap as well. Frank? Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, we've had a problem with 
nursing overtime for quite some time now. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, it was costing us a thousand dollars a day, three hundred and sixty, more than three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars in a year. And my question is, there are several steps in, in the nursing profession. You get a practical nurse, a registered nurse, etc., etc., etc. When you get somebody in for overtime, do you make certain that you are getting the the lowest paid one that is legally allowed to do that, or do you just take anyone that, and pay them at whatever their rate is? At present, we don't have adequate controls. We're looking at software that will allow us to do exactly that. Right now, we have a, we have a system that essentially encourages people to wait to the last minute to sign up for an open shift. The reason being, when we get desperate, sometimes we have to offer an incentive. So we've created part of our own monster. What we looked at last week is a system that actually rewards people for signing up early, but also gives us the choice, right on the screen, of picking the person that wouldn't be going into overtime, that wouldn't be overqualified, that would be the most adequately qualified. And essentially, we give reward points for the first person that signs up and we're dealing with a, a new workforce. We can't just post something and hope that people are going to see it. This new system, if we got it, actually would send out a text messages to everybody for whom it was appropriate, which might be those who don't get overtime, to see if we can't get an answer first. So the, the short answer is, no, we're not doing it now, but we are making deliberate steps in the direction of being sure that we do exactly what, what you said, being sure that we get the most appropriate, being the least expensive person to, to work the show. Follow up. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in the past, and I'm sure you're aware, but I think it was before you got here, we were told that it was in the contract that the most senior nurses working at the nursing home had the the authority and the ability to bump anybody who was assigned to overtime and for them to take the overtime, even though they were an RN and it only called for a practical nurse. Not true. And that's what we were told. It was in a contract. You had to do it. I found out that that wasn't true. It was never in the contract, but they, they said at the time, that's what we've been doing and we're going to continue to do it. That's no longer being done, is that it? That is no longer being done. In fact, seniority in terms of the contract only applies to layoffs and bringing people back. The, and there's, there's, and there's, no other, there's no other mandated requirement in the collective bargaining agreement. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Dave. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Great, Ken. Uh, some of the other issues, uh, it looks like, uh, it looks like propane. Uh, propane's a little high, but I'm hoping it's because of our, our past winter. Um, I mean, I, I, you remember last year, uh, towards the end of the year, we had to make an extra payment at the end of the year uh, because it was so cold. Um, but uh, Bob is tracking it and, and you know, he is watching it. Um, we signed a new contract. Ken? Ken? Yeah. Yeah. Where is this one? What page, Ken? It's, it's at all the propane. It's, it's, through, it's through all the propane yeah. lines? Yeah. Um, we, do, we weren't charged anything for the leak that we had, right? No. Um, is, has propane gone up? Yeah. Okay. That went from 114 to 107. So the usage is up a little bit, maybe because of the colder season we had? That's what I was trying to allude to. January, February, March, maybe, you know, April. Follow up, Karen? Is, is, is that a, um, a guaranteed price, or is Yes. That, okay. Yep. 107. Yes. Thank you. Frank? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we were told earlier, and I hope we're still under that, that uh, the propane had gone down so low that it was actually less than the pellet system. Well, absolutely. And we were, that's why we were using so much propane, because mm -hmm. we, we weren't using the pellet system. Well, we, we, were, we were offsetting some of the, some of the costs with, with the pellets. I mean, we had burnt some pellets, uh, but not as much as we normally do. <coughs> 
Thank you. Continue, if you would, please. Uh, those are the, but the only ones that that um, you know I'd like to comment. Uh, does any other questions from any of Representative Cordell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, under the expenditures on page ten, there is a uh, corrections grant expenditures listed of fourteen thousand dollars plus. Yes. Um, I don't see any uh, revenue listed yet for that. Um, I'm not sure what this grant is for. If, if you could explain. It, it was for the idea, the IDN seven grant, uh, and the grant committee did did. Uh, Review with that. Uh, do you want to add a little more to that, Jason? The, the two grants, yeah. IDN and Second Chance? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good morning. Uh, the Grant Review Committee did meet, which I think they were going to talk about at some point today, um, on two different grants. One is IDN Grant Integrated Delivery Network, uh, which we submitted for, um, which we don't know yet if we're going to get it. No, come fall. We already had one IDN grant that we did use for twenty-four thousand dollars, which we awarded at the beginning of this year. And the second one that we put in for is called the Second Chance Grant Act. Um, again, we won't know. We're hoping actually between now and hopefully the beginning of September, we're going to be awarded that grant or not. Um, and that one is about two hundred thousand dollars, I think, in that grant, uh, a total over a couple of years. So those are two grants that we're looking at, and um, I believe that Ms. McCarthy has more information on that to be met. Is that something you're bringing forward today in the grant review? No, but this one here, now, this is one that was approved some time ago. Right, yeah, that, that was one of the And Now, it, I know what happens, and I'm familiar with the, uh, the Sheriff's Department, that 360 some odd thousand dollar grant for the uh, dispatch we had to put the money up front and pay for things, but then the grant money would come in and reimburse us. Is that the same as this 14000 or is no. this actually an expense? The IDN grant is different. They actually sent us the money ahead of time, and so the county actually held the money, and then we paid it, the county paid it out from that, from there. So we did not That have came to out of the grant. Yes, we don't have to appropriate the, any money up front. The Second Chance Grant Act, if we are awarded, we, we would have to put money in front and do the reimbursement like the Sheriff's Grant. Um, but the IDN grant, they give you 50% up front if you're awarded it. Then when you um, meet that threshold a few months later, they send you the second half of the grant as well to you. And, and if you look on page 8 of the revenue, uh, you'll see it, the, uh, the $24,560. <clears throat> Line item? Yeah, under under uh, what the DOC? Uh, I have a different page reference. Page three. 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 Expenditures only or revenue also? We'll, we'll take revenue as, as one item. Uh, do I start with the expenditures, Ken? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, let's go revenue if we could. Thanks, Jason. Uh, 
some staff out in his office. So, um, but everything else is looking pretty well. Uh, the registry is doing fine. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody has any specific questions. Where does that come up? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Under uh, general fund 100-030 insurance refunds, can you give me a back background on that? Yes. Uh, that's, um, that's in the sheriff's department. Uh, the uh, uh, staff member was on. Uh, Disability, and that was uh, the insurance department's uh, reimbursement for for that payout because uh, you know she was on she was on disability, so they sent it directly to the county as as, as a revenue because she was using her sick time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can we go above that if we could, please? Miscellaneous income. I'm always interested in our miscellaneous income. Um, break out. That would be a, um, a refund of us and property taxes. Uh, Commissioner Bivard, uh redid some of our uh, some of a small area out here. Uh, and it went from, I don't remember the proper terminology. Can current you, use. Current, current use. use. Uh, so it saved $800, and that was for 2016. Uh, we had a refund on uh, a uh, Thomas Reuters, which is an internet uh, site for the county attorney's office. Um, and we had a 91A request, um, a couple of 91A requests, um, and um, that's about it. If I, if I could ask a question, uh, last, last year we had money from separate different sales that went to Public Works and others, and we'd ask that those, if they were... Uh, metal and other items salvage that were that they would come now to to this line is that what we're doing i don't i don't have any uh metal sales so i don't i don't see them in here but is it is it your understanding that miscellaneous income would encompass all the departments and show up here uh no the uh, sheriff's department and miscellaneous income. Oh, I, I, I understand the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. but the rest of that are under your uh, eye view, they would come here. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Are you sure of that? I wasn't. Yeah. The jail has miscellaneous. We have one. Yeah. But you talking about the smaller, the outside departments, correct? Yes. Okay. If the jail has miscellaneous income, you know, we just like we'd like those things listed out also. Doesn't have to be here today, but just just mm -hmm. in some. Go ahead and continue if you would, please. Or would you like? Let's go on uh, this back page here, unless anyone else has uh, any questions on revenue from uh, page one. Seeing none, we'll go to page two. Um, and could I have an update on um, on hay and wood, please? Sure. Um, as of August 18th, uh, our hay revenue was $12,618. Uh, so far, we've uh, bailed 5,982 bales of hay. Uh, we have uh, 2,000 bales on order. We just don't have the time uh, at this point to uh, deliver it. Uh, we still have, we haven't started a second cut yet. So last year total we had 8,000 bales uh, for the entire year. So we are up uh, as far as the bale count. Uh, the weather hasn't been very uh, cooperative this year for hay. Representative? Uh, the sheet says 2200 for sale, okay. 
Right, but this is only up, up the second quarter. The second quarter. Right, I'm giving the update as of, as of the 18th. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So at where you are at this point, what did you say, 12,800 and something? 12,618. 618. Do, do you feel confident we're going to come at, near, or exceed the 29, or excuse me, the, uh, the projection? 230,000, yes. Okay, good. Um, sale of wood, do you have an update on that also? Yes, as of August 18th, uh, the wood revenue is $8,795. Uh, uh, we've, we've, uh, uh, we have delivered 4,776 bags of wood. Uh, although they're not bags anymore, they're, they're wrapped, but we still refer to them as bags. Um, and total so far sold this year is $16,221. I'm sorry, if I could have that again. $16,221. Is what's been sold for wood? Uh, yes. Is that is that all um, your package product? Is that also um, um, have have tell tell me where we are? Where are we with our inventory of wood that we started the year with, and how close are we to be? Uh, we're about halfway process? through. We have about 50, 60 cores left out of the hundred and hundred and ten that we had. And I'm sorry, you said we had 8,007, well, excuse me, um, the second number, what was the first number you gave me for uh, wood sales, 8,007, am I on the uh, right at, Yeah, $8,795, we still have $7,500 outstanding. That means we have delivered the loads, but are still waiting for the check from the state to come in. Okay. So that totals 16,221. Okay, that's good. And where where do you see? Um, are we honoring our commitment to the state on the number of bags we said we were going to? Do you think you're going to get there? Do you think our number of thirty thousand um, dollars is a real number? I think uh, personally, at this point, we we're, might fall short. I'm going to tell you, we are going to fall short. Do you have some idea where we're going to fall short? I'm guessing uh, eight, eight, eight to ten thousand. In in the event, and that's that's in the bag wood product. Um, in so, are there plans then if we're not going to be able to uh, um, supply what we thought we could? Uh, is, is there a plan to sell that as cord wood, and then will we be done with that before third quarter? Um, no. We could do, I don't want to compete, um, so what we would do is we would do, if we're going to sell cord wood, like we told you, we weren't going to do it, but if we were going to do it, we could do, um, we would do it to the fuel assistance on a cap. Um, that would be the only cord wood we would do. Uh, we would not do any other cord wood. Uh, we could process it and uh, store it for next year. Um, but that would be the only other alternative. Do we have do we have a reason why we haven't been able to uh, fulfill what we said we were going to? If I remember right, the the um, state park system said that they agreed to take, I don't perhaps you remember the number more quicker than I do, uh, 12,000 bundles this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, how many bundles have we produced? Uh, 4,776. And um, I don't want to belabor, but how many, how many did we supply last year? I don't know. You could get that for me, but it was about thirty-five thousand, I believe, as far as the revenue. Questions? Well, yes. You asked the question um, about why are we falling short and what was the cause, 
and we didn't really get an answer. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Lumber. A response for the representative? I don't have a good answer for you. I could guess, I could guess, I can make one up, but I, I don't have a good answer. I'm not going to tell you I know why, because I don't. Well, perhaps we could get something, you know, next week from the uh, commissioners about what's going on with wood production. I know we were shorthanded for about three and a half weeks out there. Uh, Mr. DeWitt Wood was on a medical leave. <coughs> I know, are we, are we, if I might? Please. Um, are we not having sufficient uh, labor from the jail, for example? No. Nope. Um, you know, what's, what's that, that's the kind of thing that I guess that uh, we need to know. Yes, yes, no, that has been great anyhow. as far as, you know. Let's just, we don't want you to answer work. it now, or I don't. I would prefer something once you've had a chance to uh, investigate sure. and let us know what the problem is. Because if we're going to be down, you know, 10 or plus thousand dollars, that's, uh, that's some cuts that are going to have to be made or... Uh, expenses. Uh, unless, uh, unless the hay can make up for it. I don't know. Well, you're still a long way from hay. Yeah. Anyway. Please. You're all set, Representative? Representative Nelson. Thank you. I'll come to you, Commissioner. Who is the cordwood sold to the public or is it go to us? The supplier of the gate one firewood? We don't sell cordwood. We haven't since I've been here. I don't know where it has been in the past. How about the logs? The log lengths, the full. We don't I, thought sell you said, I thought you said it was different ways that it was sold. One was the firewood, I mean, to the parks. I thought it there was another bundles. source of and we could And we could sell it to the, uh, the community action, the uh, fuel assistance program. I know they've done it in the past, um, but I don't, you know, to help people through, through the winter with the heating. Um, Would some, is there a possibility that some of that could be sold to one of these firewood people that deliver it? They would want to buy it from us and then just deliver it? I, I, I doubt it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They probably do more wood in a day than we do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll be interested in hearing because uh, wood production is something that we were told is a year-round year -round item to do. and. I'm sorry to hear the superintendent was out on medical leave, but three and a half weeks uh, wouldn't come close to uh, slowing our production back to the point uh, of what our commitment was. Because clearly we said um, it, I, two, two things. One, we said there was a directive to process all the wood that could be done and do it in a timely manner and to sell it this summer. And we're nowhere near where we should be. Uh, so um, there's some other issue there. I'm glad to see that Hayes moving forward. Uh, do you know if the uh, shrink wrap uh, process that's being used now uh, was viewed favorably by the state park system? Yes. Yes, they had uh, no complaint on any of the wood. Other than we're their main contractor and we're not supplying. Right. We're only supplying uh, White Lake at this time. My understanding from the conversation with the director is that uh, as of last month, as of the beginning of this month, um, they're they're uh, purchasing everything that's being produced. We agreed to purchase 12,000 bundles this year, and we are not receiving that volume. Uh, and there's more. Uh, we do have other vendors in the state. They are not displacing the volume um, that was agreed to by Carol. So a follow-up would be uh, greatly appreciated. Yes, sir. Anyone else at this point? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I, Commissioner Hounsell, I said. Are you, you have the chair on this? Okay, go right ahead. Go right ahead. 
Uh, what I did want to say was that on Wednesday we will discuss that and we will have a report for you at the end of the meeting on Wednesday. If I remember, I would a fairly substantial inventory of onion bags uh, to take to, for this production. So, sort of where we are with what you have for product, and and then if the commissioners could update us on, on the wood processor again, that apparently we don't have much use for. That I would surely like to see you considering um, putting it out uh, to bid. Okay. Uh, anything else, uh, Ken? Uh, the nursing home is doing very well. Um, and also, our jail uh, revenue is going to be over again this year. Um, so, uh, but that's a good sign. I'm not sure. <laughs> Take that whatever way you want. Did we get our, our check from ProShare? Yes, yes we did. And the MQIP, we got half? MQIP? The quality assessment bed tax? That's quarterly, yeah. 44 and 45? We get, we get that quarterly. Okay. Um, we had budgeted one million for, for the pro share. We got almost one point two, about one hundred ninety-five thousand over. Um, our uh, our skill is is a little over than we, we than we projected. Uh, we're doing very well in that skill. Uh, our our new well, not so new now. Um, Skilled vendor is really working well with us. That's lines um, 20, 21, and 22? Excuse me? 20, 21, and 22, those lines you're talking about? Or yeah, uh, all of them? All of them, actually. Okay. That's cool. uh, I'm actually um, you know, talking more of uh, uh, 20 and, and uh, 21. Okay. Um, our private pay continues to, to uh, stay up there. Um, which why our our Medicaid re, uh, revenue is down a little bit. Um, other than that, I you know, but I think it's going very well. Um, we're doing well in in, in the cafe meals. Um, okay, do I have any other questions? Follow up. It's a question for Howie, if that's okay. How's the census this year? Census is good. Um, what's what's important along with the census is the is the is the payer mix, and that's that's tracking right on budget between private pay, um, Medicare is up slightly. What's what's interesting that's happening with Medicare uh, skills? The census is a little off, but the proceeds are higher, and that's attributable to our contractor. Um, you know, health pro. So we're getting greater, greater yield out of each day. What's happening in the skilled world is the length of stay is going down considerably. So we have far more admissions, but the length of stay is down. Um, so our total census is, is off a little, but our revenue is up. In fact, our revenue for therapy, if you add in all lines 20 through 27, are at 56.5. So that's 6.5% above projection, which is, which is significant. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Um, can someone tell me how many uh, uh, beds you have set aside for uh, short-term therapy? We we budgeted for ten, but our average census is closer is about five and a half to six. So we we've not we've not hit our target day-wise, but we've exceeded our target revenue-wise. Um, so those other beds are filled with long-term stay? Correct. Because I was, I've just been hearing rumors that we are uh, not able to support uh, the short-term therapy. 
Short term, we can. Our problem is we don't have enough long-term care beds. We, in fact, that's something that we're going to address later in this meeting. Is there is a there is a real challenge in Carroll County, especially in terms of meeting the long-term care needs. So you. So you have short-term beds available or not? We don't today, but oftentimes we do. We try to keep, in fact, we haven't had to say no to a short-term applicant in quite a while. We try to keep one bed available for somebody coming out of the hospital with, with short notice. That's interesting, because I was told you didn't have any just recently. Sorry. We, depending on what happened, today we're at, we're at full census. It was last week, but that's okay. Any further questions? I, mean, I want to thank you, um, Jason, and, and the others here uh, for the hard work in, in turning some of those. We've been working a long time. Subcommittee's been working with you on the, uh, the therapy and the mix between private care um, beds and so forth. And it looks like now that you have a vendor in place, a cooperative vendor, for the therapy side, it looks like you're making the strides that you'd hoped to make previously. So, Doing thank you, well. and, and same to Jason, your staff, for uh, for the work and you know keeping keeping those incomes um, at or above projection. So, thank you. Oh yeah, and and I'd, I'd be remiss not to mention the Registry of Deeds. Um, Stuff that you know, the economy is cooperating. Uh, staff, staff also is doing a wonderful job. So it's it's those it's those things that keep us a little more afloat. Was there a follow-up question? Or? Yeah, that was basically on uh, on registry. I see that we're at uh, overall at fifty percent of where you know where we projected. Are we expecting? through home sales to exceed our revenue, or are we expecting to stay the same, um, stay where we are? Madam Revenue is up 10% this year over last year, uh, through the end of July. So I would venture to guess that I anticipate a busy fall. I think we're going to be well above last year. Um, our docket count is up 9%. We're 5% above Belknap, which is something that's unusual. Um, we're doing quite well with real estate sales. Uh, online has been very well received. It's bringing in additional income through the online annual fee and the tapestry fees. And our improvements to the land records management system are going smoothly. You, I believe you've probably heard about the archival records management uh, plan that, that is uh, needing some funding. This year we have some funding to start with the microfilm and uh, would be spending the um, equipment fund to pay for the balance of that for this year. And next year we hope to talk uh, with you and the commissioners about uh, conservation and restoration of the records. And we've also implemented um, the service of offering credit cards to our uh, over-the-counter and charge customers, and that's being very well received. It doesn't cost the county anything. Uh, the user pays for it, and so if you're coming off the street and you only have plastic, we can now help you out. All, overall, everything is going smoothly, and we anticipate a busy fall. It's been very busy. Thank you. Any other questions, Rich? Um, if I might go back to uh, expenditures, I just thought of a, a question that I had forgotten to ask. Um, this was not in relation to the registry. Okay. Um, uh, it was in relation to a uh, informational transfer request um, for overtime in, in the business office uh, due to payroll training. And I'm just curious about the need for payroll training um, being done on an overtime basis. <coughs> well, sometimes, it, you know, uh, it takes a while to do payroll. Um, 
And so, uh, and, and since since uh, we had two people leave that were doing the payroll, um, it takes time to train to do the payroll, plus to stay after to continue doing payroll to get payroll out. Um, so it's not just specifically for the training; it's to continue to do payroll. I mean, we have, we have been training the new people, but you know, it's not all training overtime. Right. Okay. The um, the reason for the transfer was listed as payroll training, and I and I so I assume this is internal staff yes. training other internal staff. Yes. But so really, the um, the reason for the transfer was not training specifically. Is that that's what? Yes. Right. right. It's not training specifically. Okay. Thank you. Other questions on uh, revenue? Can I ask a question? Please. Okay. <clears throat> I just trying to understand one piece of reading these this revenue report. When the county, for example, this month the county received a check of about fifteen thousand dollars for um, overpayments to the New Hampshire retirement system. When those types of checks are received, does it go? in the miscellaneous other income lines are credited back to the retirement lines in the individual's apartments. Thank you. Ken, could you answer that? It depends on what time frame it's for. If it's for the current year, then goes it's distributed back to the to the county's share and the employee's share. So if it's not the current year, our, we've been advised by our our auditors, how they would like us to handle that. So we just put, we do that in a different way. Because you can't have it hitting the current year. So does it, is the different, if I could? Please. Is the different way, it would, it would be like in the administration miscellaneous or refund line or? It doesn't actually, it's on, it's a balance sheet item. So we wouldn't see that on right. this. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions on revenue? Okay, seeing none, thank you. Thank you for the good work, one and all. The, um, I'd like to uh, move, and I'm not sure where I am on my agenda, uh, but I would like to uh, uh, have a discussion while I have you there, Ken, on um, staffing and uh, um, on uh, finance director and where we are with HR and the comfort level of the commissioners and yourself and whether we need to uh, consider um, some alternative action uh, before we start that conversation. Uh, just like everyone here to understand that we're speaking in general terms, we're not going to speak of persons, personalities, job performance, and so forth. I've been questioned by many of the delegation, many here and many that are not here, as to the concern of the delegation that when we had our issues in the past, one of the items that was identified for us to get on board with right away was, and it was endorsed by the delegation, was that we would put in an uh, administrator and we would bring in a finance director. And uh, so we've gone through the dark cloud times, and um, I don't believe we have had the uh, issues that when we had a couple of uh, blips with payroll, meeting payroll in a timely manner, I believe, I'm hoping you're going to tell me that that's all been taken care of. Uh, and I'd like to know, uh, do the commissioners have a plan to bring on an interim <coughs> finance director? If we are satisfied with where we are and promoting within as a finance director, but how you can assure this delegation that the books are in order and being watched over, and that we are in that we are submitting in timely manner uh, both the state and federal government, whether and that um, uh, our audits are moving forward and everyone's happy with that procedure. So left that pretty wide open, mm -hmm. but I, I know that it's a conversation I and many others would like to have, so please. So let's start with, with what you finished with. Um, 
I know I am quite satisfied in the direction we're, we're going. Um, I've had conversations with, with our auditors. They're quite comfortable of what, of what we've done in the finance office. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I can only say that, you know, when I was first hired, I wasn't able to pick the team that, that I wanted to work with. It was picked for me. Uh, since the new, uh, since a new board of, of the commissioners have come in, um, they're allowing me to, to pick my own team um, so that I can work with that team. I have in place the people who I want to work with, um, and I have the full backing of, of the county commissioners as well as our auditors. Um, I don't foresee any changes. Uh, if the auditors had some some concern, which they did not, they're in, they're in, they're they're in full support of this. Um, moving on to the to the HR department, we split that up. Um, we uh, each building has their own representative, uh, so that they can handle internal issues quickly and more accurately. Um, all three work well together, um, and they and they are all part of a of a collaborative group of people uh, throughout all the counties. Uh, this model works well from the county it came from. That's why I wanted to implement it here. Um, and so far, it's been going very well. Um, the, uh, the person at the nursing home is well versed in, in the chrono system. Uh, she has been a huge help to us. Also, uh, she has a wealth of experience uh, dealing with... with uh, uh, an influx of, of employees. She's, she comes to us from uh, Gunstock Mountain, which they recruit 700 different people a year. So, you know, she knows how to recruit and hopefully how to retain. Um, we've been uh, uh, not only training uh, Jessica in, in the payroll, but also Kathy's been working along with her. So we have two people uh, in the payroll system, so we don't run into a glitch, we don't run into you know, something happening uh, to our main payroll person. Uh, we have redundancy, um, and they're working issues out as they, as they come up. We haven't missed a payroll. Um, the Department of Labor was... Um, uh, quite excited about the way we, we were approaching it, um, and they are working with us. Um, I know you, you, you did open this up to the commissioners, so I don't know if they had any comments. Please. Um, I will speak, I believe, to the commissioners in saying that we're quite satisfied with the realignment that's going on in the finance department. Um, it's it's been a struggle, I think, for everyone down there, but everyone's working way over. And uh, I think they're excited to see the other side at the moment. Um, HR, it's still a wait and see. Ken's new approach with three HR people is different. Um, it seems at the present time to be working. It is being watched. Ken does report um, to, with us. Generally, I think with all the new people, it just takes time for training and adjustments. Um, I believe that the finance office has been doing even more than what they were doing before as far as uh, reports for our new auditors for the um, energy um, group that we have hired to look at um, the county. So I. I think I speak for the commissioners when I say that we're satisfied at the present time. We are watching and seeing because it is a new experience. Thank you. Representative Weinberger. 
Oh, Jeff Crusher. I've got several of them. Please. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, on HR, you said you have hired, or you have three people working in HR. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're, who do they report to? Uh, they report to uh, me, actually. So. Okay, so they, so you have one person for admin? Area. No, one person for this building, okay. one person for the nursing home, one person for the jail. And collectively, they 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 all work in, in, in unison. Okay. And so they all report to the admin person, you? Yes. Okay, or administrative person. Okay. If I might. Please. Um, we had, uh, a couple of years ago, that initiated all of these actions in a, a report that kind of outlined where we needed to go. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just wondering uh, where we were with that because we haven't had an update on that for quite some time. And uh, perhaps at our uh, next meeting we could um, spend some time going through where we are sure. and what we're doing. Yeah. Um, happy. Because that, you know, that was a biggie. Okay. Now, how many people are now working in finance? Uh, just two. Kathy and Cheryl. We have an admin, we have an administrative assistant. So that's three? Oh, I don't know. Well, she said finance, so right. two yeah. actually are just work in finance. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so it works for the commissioner's office. So that's down one full-time person? Yes. Okay. But we shifted responsibilities, so. Okay, so tell me what that means. That means we shifted a lot of Kathy's responsibilities over Cheryl, like paying the bills, um, Doing, doing some postings, reconciling, um, and Kathy's taken Chuck's responsibilities and removed Cheryl's responsibilities, a lot of the admin responsibilities, to to the administrative assistant. Okay, so you okay, so you hired an administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you mind telling me her name in case she answers the phone? Her name is <laughs> is uh, Deanna Valerie. Valerie. And um, during the budget, we had a lot of discussion about uh, moving our payroll system to something other than what we had. Mm -hmm. And did we, did we approve that? No. Okay. no oh, yeah, you, you, approved, you approved it. We, we haven't implemented it. Right. Okay. Okay. As at this point, we're, we're not fully mm -hmm. um, assured that, that that's what we need to spend on it. I'm not going to get into, you know, how this all came to be, but I, I don't believe we, we really need that system, uh, as was presented from the, from the former finance director. Okay. Chris Johnson, did you have something Maybe. to mention on that? And then I'll come back to you, Representative Bumberger. Yeah. Did you have something to add on? I, I just wanted to complete the commissioner's position as far as staffing uh, the topic under conversation right now. Uh, as you know, when you talk about staffing, you're talking about people. So as a result, uh, it's always, staffing is always a fluid uh, thing. You never know when people are going to decide to do something else. But at the very uh, top, uh, if you want that stability to be there. And I can tell you that I am very satisfied with the direction that uh, Ken Robichaud has taken us as far as his recommendation and implementation of staffing. We are getting the job done, I believe, more efficiently and for less money. Uh, it may be a little bit different than what we had planned on doing, but it's a better, it's, it's turning out better, and that's a result of, I think, the fluidity of, of the circumstances. Um, I'm very uh, satisfied with uh, Kathy Armstrong's work. It's, uh, I, I quite frankly believe her to be uh, a treasure that might have been hidden for a number of years from a site from some other, for whatever reason, she's doing an outstanding job and uh, I have no problems uh, 
get the questions that I need answered, and uh, I'm satisfied that she's doing, and, and finance is doing an outstanding job of staying on top of things. As you know, it has been complicated over the last few years, but those complications have been alleviated to a huge degree. And I would ask the commissioners, I'm sure would appreciate if you would give us more time to prove that the direction we're taking uh, is the proper one. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Bumberg, do you have five more to ask? Yeah. So I guess that um, I'm not sure when we're going to have an, a, another meeting, but I would certainly like an update on the fact that uh, on the payroll and where we're going and what we're doing because it wasn't working, I guess. And, and if I could just emphasize, Melissa, that both the uh, uh, performance audit items that was mentioned by the representative earlier and this should be uh, uh, topics for, for the next. Did you have more, Representative Bumberg? Just for clarification, does that include the DRA? report as well, the DRE report and the performance audit, those two items? That's fine. Okay. And I, I have Cordelli and Marsh, so do, do you have more at this time, Marsh? No, that's more than enough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have something yeah, to yeah, add? Yeah, clarification on, on the what DRA report are we speaking about? When the team from the Department of Revenue came here for a couple of days a week, and then they produced a document. Oh, okay. And you'll have had your hearing by that time, so we'll be fine. Representative Cordelli? Thank you. Um, I do not share the optimism and good feelings that have been expressed by the administration. I am very concerned about what's going on for several reasons. One, um, I found out on Facebook about uh, a Department of Labor investigation. Uh, almost 500 violations by the county in terms of state statutes in relation to uh, wages and earnings. Um, I think is extremely troubling. Um, I uh, immediately contacted the commissioner of the Department of Labor. Um, and um, he indicated to me that the best course would be uh, to follow the informal hearing. And as I think I emailed the, the chair, um, I, I think it would be very wise if a member of the executive committee of the delegation would be present at that informal hearing with the Department of Labor because we're talking about fines of over $48,000 to the county. In addition to the payouts to um, employees that are owed money, um, secondly, um, it was mentioned about audits. Um, I, I don't know if we've seen a 2016 audit. I don't know what's happening with audits um, that I would like to know. Thirdly, I saw a posting on Facebook and followed up, and we've had discussions going back um, at least a, a year and the requirement of a member of this delegation to file the 91A request and spend his own money to try and figure out what's going in, on in terms of the retirement system and dental system um, uh, dollars. Um, it, the possible uh, dollars we're talking about in terms of incorrect payments um, is extremely substantial. Um, and uh, based on my follow-up conversation to a Facebook posting, the situation is still going on. I've got letters from a former employee um, about accrued uh, time that uh, was incorrect. Um, and this accrued time is a subject I can remember being discussed going back to when I was first elected five years ago. And it's still not correct. It's still going on. People are classified wrong, all sorts of things. Payouts, uh, this person got a check for $821 and with no explanation. They were just told by the county, oh, that's correct. You're owed that money. Um, they left the employment of the county um, at the end of March. They got a... Um, letter from the retirement system that uh, they wrote 
$200, it was previously mentioned, $14,000 reimbursement from the retirement system to the county um, and you know where that money showed up in the revenue. Uh, this person was told, and I've, I've got the letter from the retirement system, there was a member contribution to this for this person of $200. She got a copy of it. She has yet to see that money. Um, dental. Again, I'll remind you that she left the employment of the county at the end of March. Uh, she got a letter um, August 10th from Delta Dental informing her that her uh, daughter was turning 26 years old and was no longer eligible to be included um, under her coverage. She called Delta Dental and you know, asked them, and they were said, well, you know, you're still employed by Carroll County. And she said, no, I'm not. So the Delta Dental thought she was still employed by the county, uh, you know, almost six months later. This has been going on and on, hundreds of thousands of dollars possibly involved in this. And so... Please, Representative Speaker. Um, it dates back, we don't know how many years. Uh, but I do not share the confidence in what's going on in terms, you know, maybe, I don't know if it's the people or the systems we have in place, but something has got to change. The, the taxpayers need to have confidence um, in what's going on here in terms of uh, the financial stability of the county. I certainly don't have confidence in, at this point. And, you know, we have the power, and I'm certainly going to make a motion in the not-too-distant future if things don't change, uh, under our RSA 2417 to form a committee of investigation. But something has to be done. You know, we can't have, you know, meetings talking about the price of blueberries. We've got to have action to f figure out what's going on in the county and to change it and to correct it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Um, Commissioner Hounsell, something brief? Very brief. We would all be better served if we get our correct information from the sources in the right books instead of Facebook or what's known as Facebook. As, as brief as I'll be at this time. Yes. I, I don't fine. have more to say that's, outside this meeting. That's fine. I, I don't want to go back and forth. No. Um, I, I have been told that there are still issues um, with people still being on the dental plan. Uh, we certainly know that... Uh, we certainly know that that was a problem in the past, um, and I may not have the passion as my fellow representative does <laughs> over this issue, but I have a great concern that, you know, perhaps we're taking care of payroll and items and things are rosy and there's income coming into this, this, uh, to this county at this point in time. Uh, but I also share, and I really want to explore this further, um, you know, where we really are with what's happening out there. We need to know that, that the dental issue is gone and taken care of. We need to know that on a monthly basis, which is what I believe we were told, that, you know, lists were being checked and people were being taken off of it. And I would like some assurance by... Uh, you as the administrator to respond to uh, the representative's question. Uh, you, you can respond that to me that 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 has been purged and how we're handling that on a monthly basis. Um, representative Marsh. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Ken, with your consolidation in the finance department, could you uh, update the delegation as to what uh, finance controls are in place so that we know that we're not compromising those with the uh, Absolutely. We, we've established um, uh, more financial controls in, in the past year than this county has ever done. Um, since, since the finance director has left, um, I've taken over looking at the bills and, and, and a lot of the invoices, along with uh, uh, Kathy Armstrong as well. Um, you know, we, we do everything that, that we're supposed to do. Um, our auditors are very pleased in the direction we're going. Um, they were just here last week, um, and they'll be back again next week. Um, so, I don't know what else.
us to say is we're, you know, we're, we're comfortable, they're comfortable. Well, if you want me to explain it, I'll tell you. Yeah, yes, but to make it correct, so let's get some truth out there. So if you okay. can have a follow-up with me on that. Uh, may, I ask, may I ask if the commissioners, if the commissioners have considered outsourcing payroll, we're in a position that we're saving a lot of money, outsourcing payroll, as we have discussed in the past, and the past financial director was not in favor of it, but it would certainly seem to me that if that was outsourced, a real look at it this time, then that would free up your new uh, financial director to be doing many of those other things that I have to believe are taking our time and have to believe I, I, I believe there's a thread of real, real truth in what I'm hearing in that time occurred and so forth probably still isn't there. I know these companies handle that and they handle it properly. Have the commissioners gone to the point again to look at that? You have some surplus here and take that burden off your finance director, uh, payroll, and, and be able to look into some of these items that the delegation has concerns with. This commission, Please. since January, has not looked at outsourcing paper. Um, I think it's probably a good suggestion that we look at it. I do know that the nursing um, payroll is very complicated uh, because of the 24-7 shift, the same way with the nurse, with the uh, jail, and with the sheriff's department. If there are outsourcing payroll companies that handle that and could handle it well, I am not sure. That is something that um, I will bring up on Wednesday at our meeting, and we can start some sort of an investigation into it. Not based on past investigations, but we will start. Yeah. Thank you. Ken? I I've already set up a, uh, a meeting with an outside vendor. Uh, I haven't passed it on to, to them yet because we just did it last week. But, uh, Is it one of the leading vendors that yes. does this program? Yes. So I'll, I'll come back to Richard Crawford in a moment. So the Kronos module, that's, a, that's not an issue that we're investigating at this point in time. The model we no. talked about, the module. Okay. Yeah. Not at this time. Thank you. Representative Crawford? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, maybe I missed it, but are we in the process of hiring a new finance director inside or outside? So we've allocated that money for that position, but we're not using it. My understanding is that we are, we are temporarily filling it with internal, and some of that money is going to make up for the difference for that individual. But, but we'll, they are not actively looking to hire someone. Will you? Will you? You will not. They so are we're, not. We're, that position is no longer. They are not actively seeking someone to fill that role. They have, they have um, moved responsibilities inside the department um, to handle that, and they're happy with their position at this time. Chicken. Yes. They're, yep. Yes. They're actually short one person in finance from where we were, and that, okay. And what they did is that they hired a part-time admin person and redid Cheryl's duties. No, okay. that's not correct. Mm -hmm. That's what you told me. No. It's a full-time admin assistant. Oh, okay. And, and, and Chuck's duties is on Kathy's, and Kathy's is on Cheryl's, so we didn't, we're not really we're not really down a person. Well, we haven't done well with holding back names, but I think we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, I, okay, I understood you said that the admin person was half time. Did anyone else hear me say that? Hear him say that, or was it just my ears? I think it was Karen, originally, that was a part time position, but she did so well that within, what, four weeks or something, we put her into a full time position. Okay, so. At this point, Cheryl is only doing finance stuff. No. No. Well, for the most part. She's also handling payroll. 
if, if we could have an answer for the representative, is is it only finance that that administrative position? Is it still overseeing payroll? What, what? No, she she does mostly finance, but she does still do minutes for for our, our meetings, um, and that's about it, basically. Would I, well, first of all, it would seem minutes for your meeting would be a responsibility there. That there should be someone to do that. But you need to give us time to start, you know. That's fine. I mean, that's fine. Representative Humberger, are you sufficiently, or Representative Humberger, <laughs> do you have further thoughts? Okay, well, I guess I heard wrong. And, okay. Uh, I thought they said part time. And so if it was me, then now I understand. Okay. Uh, that we have two people in five when we used to have two and a half. Yes. And so we are down half a person. Because the admin person used to spend <coughs> half time in fun. So we have actually reduced at least by half time. Half time. Is, was, is the representative's assumption correct? I don't know where she's getting the half time person in finance. Well, I was told that Cheryl was working half-time or part-time in finance and part-time as the administrative assistant. And that was, or, you know, not administrative assistant, uh, admin person, whatever the term was. But she was, in fact, doing work for finance, the finance department. So that's what I was told. We, we could just have a written explanation and that sound along with the other, just so, we're, just so we're all on the same page. I mean, I do finance stuff, too. Rev. President yeah. Crawford, did you have a follow up on that before I move? I guess that I, then my answer really is there will, there will be no <laughs> finance director any longer. Yes, they, they, so they, Kathy is, that's her mm -hmm. her main job is mm -hmm. finance director. So yes. She has controller. controller. Yeah. So controller. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ken, I got a couple questions. Uh, who signs up the new employees? For what? When they come in, health, health, dental, retirement, gets their W9. All depends on what I, building you're in. If you're in nursing, it's a nursing home. Here, it's, it'll be Jessica. It'll be jail. It'll be Lori. Okay. Who does the ex exit interviews? Uh, sometimes department heads. Sometimes we don't do exit interviews a lot of times. You know, I've done a few, but we're not really good at doing exit interviews. Never have. And who processes the leaving employees? Uh, again, whatever building you're in, and then it's sent over to Jessica in, in, in payroll. And who authorizes the payment of health and dental for those employees that are hired and then making sure that their benefits are terminated when they're released from duty? Kathy reviews the bill and so do I. But who removes them physically off the roll? Delta Dental does. Who notifies them? Uh, it, it, that'd be Jessica. And who notifies whoever the health plan is? That'd be Jessica. So we have one person that handles the release of... Yes. Is there an open enrollment policy for changes through the... I'm sorry. Please. Throughout the year? Yes. Okay. And my favorite is that, is that we had a very smooth budget season. Mm -hmm. I hope that that will continue for the next budget season. I think it'll be smoother. Thank you. But I'm very optimistic. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Representative Cordelli. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess my request would be that, since mm -hmm. we were talking about dental also, that um, and plans for the commissioners to look at various things, that um, in light of what's been going on with dental, that maybe the commissioners uh, might look at the what has been uh, indicated to us, I believe, in the past, that the county's policy is that every employee automatically gets signed up for dental. Uh, maybe that policy needs to be re-examined. They don't automatically, they have to, they have a choice. They can sign up for it or not, they can refuse it. Yeah, it's not, there's no pressure. It's not automatic. And it's not all, yeah. It's not all what? It's not all staff. I, 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 I think I'd have a follow-up to that. 
I, I'm sure that I've been told in the past that that was the county policy, that it was automatic, that every employee gets dental. No, we heard wrong. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we heard wrong again. Jason? Yeah. I, I'm not sure if it's with the clarity or not, but in the past what has been said was that every employee, if they're an individual, the individual plan costs nothing to them, so we do encourage them to take the plan as it is a benefit to them and our county keeping them healthy, but they have to sign up for it. And at that time when I said that, I was asked by the delegation, why are you pushing on them to tell them to sign up? Are you pushing that on us? Yes, because it is a benefit to them. And there was some animosity that was pushing something on that the county offers for free. Um, so if that clarifies anything, because some of you were here during that time as well. But they can sign up for it at no cost in an individual plan. I have a follow-up. Is there, is there a plan in place when employees are terminated or leave their employment here? Mm -hmm. And that's in, in effect as well? Right. We, we have what's called a, a termination uh, notice, which we send to Delta Dental, which this individual was sent uh, so. to Delta Dental. Um, for some reason, uh, they didn't receive it, or they lost it, but it was sent. Also, it was sent uh, to Interlocal Trust Health Insurance as well. Um, and on the bill, we, we follow the bill for 90 days, um, because that's how long we can have. At this 90 days, if the name has not been removed for some reason, there is a watch put next to it at 60 days. At 90 days, a phone call is made to Delta Dental, and a letter is sent to the individual saying that, that they no longer have Delta Dental benefits and that they can have COBRA if they'd like. That's what happened in this case. Um, we did everything we were supposed to do. Please. Um, the usually when an employee employee leaves employment um, on their last day, um, they're usually given the COBRA notice for all of their remaining benefits. They're paid out the same day, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Why, why are we waiting 60, 30, 60, 90 days out? Because it takes, it takes Delta Dental that much time sometimes. It all depends when the bill comes out and when, and when they terminate it. Because we pay 30 days in advance. So if, it's, if we do it after the bill is cut, there goes another 30 days. So that's 60 days out before, uh, be, before Delta even has a, you know, a time to even take their name off. It's some some people have you know been on there six seven weeks, you know, um, but we we do follow it and you know we do make calls. Do follow. Please. Do we get reimbursements for the people? Absolutely. That could, could we see those reimbursements for the people that have been released? Sure. That, that don't need to be specific. Just maybe a dollar amount of people that were. Yeah. For this year? Oh, for this year? For this year. Okay. And I don't want to go back further, but I think for this year, I think this delegation should be apprised of making sure that people were removed from the dental program. Both dental and health. If you want to. Health is a much bigger item. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Health is much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Can you add health insurance to that too, Ken? We're going to pull it off every invoice, so it's going to take a little while. And you want what? Health as well. Further? We'll for the discussion on that. I um, I just um, uh, Red Straw had given me a note as I had left, and if I could follow up, uh, had have you had this conversation? Item number one: expenditures. An approval by the commissioners, your item number one that you've given me, surcharge equipment account. That's on the documentation. Did, did the commissioners okay this expenditure last week? They would like the input of the delegation prior to. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Please. The position of the commission is that the through the budget process, the delegation was asked to fund uh, archives at $105,000. For whatever reason, the budget amount that was provided by the delegation was $35,000. Uh, the 
contract that the commissioners have been asked to uh, endorse is for the amount of 105000 uh, It's As was in uh, February and January, it remains, this work needs to be done. Uh, my hesitancy is to overexpand what was clearly stated as a uh, dollar limit by the delegation. If, however, the delegation has no problem uh, uh, spending an amount in excess to what they have uh, previously supported, uh, I'd have no su uh, problem supporting this contract. Uh, this work needs to be done. It's uh, one of those things that uh, seems to be put off and put off and it doesn't go away. Uh, I believe the uh, registrar has brought in a uh, good proposal by the vendor. Uh, who is well renowned known and uh, has served us for many years. The problem is just that uh, the amount of that contract exceeds the amount of money that this delegation has appropriated for that project. Mr. Chairman, it's my understanding that what Lisa presented today was that the balance of that money, about the 35000 would come out of the equipment fund? Correct. Um, and I don't believe the commissioners have any objection to that. The commissioner's objection was that if it was to come out of a $35,000 fund for the promise that we pay next year, which we don't have that authority without your approval. But when I heard a proposal today, I believe the remainder was to come from an equipment fund. The um, backup. I had a conversation with the registrar about the archiving and using, uh, instead of, there was a discussion a few months back that we had approved $30,000 towards something that made more sense to handle in one sitting with the vendor and the vendor would come in and they would archive everything at one time as opposed to doing $30,000 worth of work now and uh, coming back another time and another time as we came up with the money. The vendor was happy to do it all at once, uh, knowing that they were going to receive payment. Uh, when sat and looked at this with the registrar and then looked at uh, funds that were sitting in the surcharge equipment account, uh, which we collect on every document that's recorded, we have a, we have a, a greater, we have more money in the fund than what we have for a need because some of those, some of those uses or some of those requirements in the past are now uh, leased equipment and so forth. So the thought process was it would be a cleaner, cleaner way to take care of this vendor by just paying them now and not having to complicate future budgets to handle this item and that would get us to a point that we had things archived from past to present. What I had requested from the registrar was to bring this to the commissioners to gain their approval. If they were to gain their approval then it, would, it was something that I thought we could then work on as an item from the delegation to make that approval because in my mind it made sense. So step one was to take it to the commissioners. Commissioners either say yes or no. You can't spend the money until we say yes. So we were looking for a positive response from the commissioners. But you folks haven't had a chance to do that. So once again this discussion is ahead of where it should be. Yes? We did have a chance to do that by signing a contract committing this County to $105,000. Uh, we chose not to do that, uh, and I believe rightly so. If I was in your shoes, and if I had approved $35,000, then I saw that a contract was signed that on the next budget cycle, I'm going to be asked to support something that I hadn't previously supported, but now it's with the argument, well, we kind of committed ourselves to it. I didn't think that was the right step. Uh, where we stand right now is I have no problem signing this contract for the amount stated if we had assurance from the delegation that they didn't object to us signing a contract. It's different things. Moving it forward is the way you suggest 
requires us to sign a contract. I, I think it would be imprudent for us to sign a contract, but we can't hire someone without a contract. I, I, I wasn't, if, if I could, and I don't, I don't want to go down this path. We're going to be here for hours talking about something that I thought was relatively simple. So if, if the commissioners aren't comfortable with it, end of story. We're done. I do not, I'm not going to involve, and I appreciate there would be concern on how we would feel about it not, but it seemed like a reasonable way to do, and I wish we had gotten there. We didn't get there, so perhaps I'm yeah, thank you, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me understand this. Was the contract signed for $105,000? No, it, it was not. It was not. We don't have the money in that, in, in, for that specific purpose. We have $35,000. Is that correct? It yes. $35,000. Well, I think the only legal way to, if you want to get it done this year, you want to sign the contract, you want to get the money this year, is to, uh, through the process of uh, transferring appropriations through the executive committee. If you can figure out where to get the money, then I, that, that's what I would recommend. I, I, I'm not happy and, and I'm not comfortable with saying, oh yeah, well, we'll do it next year. And, and uh, what happens if half of us are in an automobile accident and a whole new crew here? Or a half a new crew? And, but, and they have to do what we decided? Does it? Okay. No. Thank, thank you, Representative. And I'm not traveling with you for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Umber. Yes, um, I'd like to make a motion that we take $70,000 out of the Registrar's Equipment Fund and to pay for the archival of the records. Second. Thank you. It has to be a delegation decision. We have we have a motion by the chairman to remove seventy thousand no, dollars, which not is the chair. Uh, excuse me. You <laughs> <laughs> will always be my chairman. <laughs> the, um, if I could, before I read again, was seventy thousand dollars the number that we were looking for? Seventy thousand five hundred. Seventy thousand five hundred dollars from the. Uh, Registry search, search, surcharge and equipment account uh, for the purpose of funding out of this year's budget the archival cost of one hundred and five thousand five hundred. Mr. Chairman, I would happily second that motion. Yeah, totally I believe Representative Marsh has already seconded discussion. Representative Cordelli, then I'll come to you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what exactly is being archived? Um, I thought that. All our records were online, um, and it had been um, scanned previously under a contract. If, if I could ask the registrar to come forward, and if you could encapsulate this yeah. as quickly as you did seconds. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Cordelli, the, uh, there are two facets to my job. One is recording, the other is archiving. We stopped making microfilm back in 1992, and it is the standard for archival to have microfilm, microfilm of the records. After the microfilm stopped being made, marginal notations continued to be made to the documents, so that old microfilm is obsolete. So this would, our, uh, this would um, microfilm just under 3 million images so that they were preserved forever. We would have our standard archival record safe, no matter what happens to the electronic record or the paper record. President okay. McCarthy, if you'd stay, stay presently there. Yes, uh, I will vote no for the simple reason that I think it's illegal. The law is very specific on what measures and how a a, 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 an appropriation can be transferred. And I don't think we can sit here and do it and just overlook the law. The law says that the request must come from the, the commissioners in writing to the executive committee, and then the executive committee will either approve or disapprove of the move. And this is a shortcut. I don't like shortcuts. I will not vote for it. Thank you, Representative. Representative Umberger, did you have a comment? Yeah. The comment is this is a different fund that has nothing to do with what Representative McCarthy just expressed. And uh, it's, a, it's a 
fund that um, the uh, uh, delegation has to approve spending money from, and it can only be for the purposes of equipment repair, equipment repair and so on, out of the uh, Register of Deeds office. I, I, I concur. Uh, further questions or comments on the motion? Yes, Representative Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Should this be dependent on the, uh, the commissioners wanting it or agreeing to it? I was, I, was I, hoping, I was hoping that we would have gotten there prior to this I, discussion. I believe the commissioners are in support of this. I, yes. can, I can assure you I would be very surprised if we don't vote to sign or sign this contract on Wednesday with this vote. Ken? It just states that it has to be a, a majority vote of, of the convention and the commissioners. And you have two here that, that say they're, they're in for it, so. Representative Evelyn. I would probably say for future um, requests like this, I think if we get a request from the commissioners for their support, comes to the delegation, we can make a more educated um, uh, motion and feel comfortable with this going f going forward. I would agree. Representative McCarthy. Right, so I'm reading from section 478 colon 17 J. Uh, and it specifically states that money in the account, we're talking about the uh, equipment account or in the register of deeds, Money in the account may only be used for the purchase of or rental of or repair of equipment, period. Thank you. And if I could respond to that, Representative, uh, there have been conversations with other registrars and others um, on the interpretation of that, and it is the feeling of a collective body that this is something that we can expend those monies for. It still leaves us a, a balance in there for um, any, it leaves us over $20,000 in that account, and we've been incurring something in the neighborhood of twenty to $25,000 dollars a year. So I don't feel that we're cutting ourselves short here, but instead of just having an account with money in it, I think this is to the to the benefit of the county and the taxpayers to know that their uh, their documents are at least archived in what is the present form that is described to be the best to to handle the archive. So I I myself will support this. Uh, I hear fully what the representative and you have said about this, and it was my hope that this process would have been talked and agreed to ahead of our meeting today. It hasn't. I think Representative Unberg's motion to do this, I think, makes sense at this point in time. Further further discussion? <coughs> yes, Representative come on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So why are we not following the existing protocol for line item transfers in this case? <coughs> if, if, if it's, let, 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 before we go to that. Going to. Um, Madam Registrar, is this, is this, is this, um, the con, this, this work I believe is not to begin until November? Yes. So, um, I would say, Representative Camo, that you're, that we do have time indeed to do this at a, at a future date if it's, if it's, it's heartburn to the delegation at this point in time. Representative Bumberger and then Nelson. Well, I just believe that it's separate money and that uh, it should not come out of the budget because this is a fund that's available to do this kind of work. And um, as opposed to a budget line item. Okay. It's a valid point. Thank you. Representative Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With the word pending in that motion, something from the commissioners help clean it up? Pending. Uh, I don't know. If, if I could, uh, Madam Secretary, could you just tell us where we are? Uh, with no further discussion, we'll call for a vote. 
Motion to move to approve expending seventy thousand five hundred dollars out of the registry surcharge and equipment account to pay for archival of records. Okay. Motion clear enough. Okay. If you're if you're in favor of that motion, I'll signify it by saying aye. 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 If you are against that motion, nay. 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 Three nay. And the count motion, I believe, passes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have, did were, were minutes handled from the previous meeting? Okay. Please. Before we go on, okay. since we're still on the um, finance yes, issues, um, uh, it had been raised about the 2016 audit. Yes, Could we just you. get an update as to what the status is? Because it's almost September. Good. They're coming back August 31st and 1st of September for their final information, and subsequent to that, they'll have to report. Representative Fridelli? Well, that's, yeah. um, that's a significant, excuse me, yeah. that's a significant problem since our, whatever our form is that we have to send in by the 1st of September has to have the audited numbers there. I'm, I just think that somehow or other, that's a problem. Yes? I don't think there's any audited numbers on there. The, the, it's the 42 and the 46. Yeah, but that's the one, those are the ones that DRA sets our tax rate on. on. Right. Yes. And I so, so, yes, I know so. Yeah. If we could, if, um, Ken, if you could respond in writing to sure. that, add that to our list of things we're looking for for next week. Yep. Representative Credilli, did you have another comment on that? No, no follow up. Thank no you. Follow -up. Representative. McCarthy. I have a comment to make on it, and the reason for being so late is that we, we violated the law and it was three, late, three months late in getting started. The law says it has to be done within 90 days of the beginning of the year. It wasn't done until, what, June or July? Or started even in June? Thank you. All right. Minutes of uh, last month's meeting that were distributed as people have the delegation had a chance to look at. Uh, and uh, are there omissions or corrections, Representative McCarthy? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, do we have a few minutes to go over the grant program? We will. We will make time for that. Is it relative to the uh, minutes? Yes. No, it, well, it's it's relative to what has to be should be done here pretty soon. Okay, we'll we'll come to it after minutes. Uh, discussions on minutes. So move. Second it. Move and second it. Um, not hearing any omissions or corrections. All those in favor, will signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, nay. Approved. Uh, we will come to. Uh, we still have a discussion on um, um, assisted housing, I believe, is maybe one of the terms for it. We're getting there shortly. Um, Representative, you had a question on grants. Well, not a question, but uh, there were two grants that are pending that have been applied for, uh, <coughs> and I am... <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, been designated by the delegation as the delegation's uh, representative to the grant committee. And uh, we had a meeting, and uh, the meeting went very well, uh, about the sheriff and the uh, uh, House of Corrections was, uh, was here to go over the grants. And what I found out was, number one, the delegation has no statutory authority relative to the application for grants. The, the authority that the delegation has by law is we have the authority to approve or disapprove 
the grants, but we have no authority relative to the application of grants. The thing that I was disappointed in was that either the county attorney's office refused or it was thought they were refused and they weren't even asked to go over the grant application to make certain that some of the points that we strongly are against, like costing the taxpayers any money, were not a part of those grants. Um, I was assured that neither one of the grants would cost the taxpayer a single penny. But I was also told that the county attorney would either said, no, they don't have time to look at the grants. I think that's ludicrous. Anyway, um, the commission and myself agreed that the de designated individual from the delegation should be present when they do go over the applications so that the that individual knows exactly what the grant has to do, what it's for, what it's going to do, and the fact that it's not going to cost the taxpayers money. So I hope that continues, and, and the chairman of the, the commission has told me that, yes, a member of the delegation grant committee will be invited to every uh, meeting where they're going to discuss the application of grants. The other problem that we have is that sometimes these grants are approved, but we have to act very quickly um, to actually, for, the delegation has to act to approve those grants, otherwise they could be lost. The point is that I think that the grants should be uh, talked about and gone over by the delegation prior to the actual approval and so that the, de the, the, the commission knows that once that approval comes in, the delegation is okay with it, they're going to approve it. And I recommend approval of the two grants that we talked about at the first meeting. Thank you. Thank you for that. Is that a motion or is that... I can make it a motion that we approve the, the initial two grants. Second Chance Grant Act and IDN Grant. Integrated Delivery Network. Are they recorded? Please, Please go ahead, Representative. Are they in the budget already? No. 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 I, will, I will second Representative McCarthy's motion to accept these grants mm -hmm. in the discussion. Okay. We have a motion made to on the second, could I have what the two grants are? IDN, which is Integrated Delivery Network Grant. Huh? And then the second one is the Second Chance Grant Act. Is it IDN 7? It's IDN 7, yes. Integrated Delivery Network, Region 7. Sure, sure. <coughs> sure. And I heard the representative say the Sheriff's Department. Um, I'm guessing that's the Opioid Reduction Second Phase Grant. Is that? On that application? Um, is it, that's not one of the ones we discussed, is it? No. no. It's At that up. meeting? It's coming up. Right. Yes, the application's in. So I, I wasn't sure if that was what he was talking about. No. no we need okay. another meeting to go over that one. Okay. I wasn't here. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I also propose that the report that is generated from the committee on those individual grants be given a reference number and either put in the budget or given to the delegation before so we're all up to date on the details? And off of, their, off of the meeting we met uh, for the committee meeting, we did do that. We have um, uh, Dr. Camo brought some forms and we adopted the forms and they'll have grant numbers onto it so you'll be able to see in the budget 001 is Second Chance Grant Act. A one-page sheet makes things a lot clearer for you. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I believe, sir, that I also made that uh, request on the report that I sent. Okay. Thank you. Representative Cordell? Um, if I might, I think that the grant committee, including the delegation member, uh, I think there's really two parts. There's one, the application approval, but um, I think it's very different for the, uh, once the award has been proposed, that accepting the reward because there can be things different from the application to the actual award and there might be strings attached at that point. So I think that there's a two-phase approval that should be required 
by the uh, grant committee. Okay. Is, is your feeling that the motion that we have before us is, is improper at this time, or the motion before us is fine? They can't change the grants, can they? No. Okay. So, yes. Just for clarification, the two grants that you are the motion to accept, those are grants that have been applied for, but monies that have not yet been received? And we want okay. to we want to name those two grants. So when the grant award is announced, then the commissioners can accept them without further action of the delegation. Is, is that what's happening? Okay, thank you. Okay, but the so if are you able to to recapsulate the the uh, or tell us what the motion is? Because I just want to make sure that it includes uh, the terms that were said, which I believe one one grant is IDN. Seven. IDN seven. IDN seven. And the second one is second second chance. Chance. I have a okay. motion by Representative McCarthy, second by Representative Avalani to accept the Integrated Delivery Network Region 7 grant and the Second Chance Act grant. Grant awards. If Representative Burger, do you have a thought on that? Are well, you I happy with say, that? I would just say the application. Okay. 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 Okay.
um, that would be conducted by members of the committee to uh, uh, hear from the public about their thoughts on possible uses of the land, uh, possibly with some upfront um, information that could be handed out um, for the public uh, consideration. Um, there was a discussion also of a possible online survey uh, to be uh, made available to the public and publicized uh, to receive uh, further input. Uh, there is a draft uh, uh, RFP for a uh, feasibility study um, that was done by a prior committee. Um, all the public input from these sources would be folded into uh, that RFP for the feasibility study before it's actually issued, um, but hopefully this process will uh, move forward uh, quickly um, so that we can um, proceed. Um, the, if I might remind the delegation that we had a, approved, I think, $10,000 uh, for a uh, county contribution to that uh, feasibility study. Um, and the committee is working with the New Hampshire Charitable Trust and the, Care, uh, the Kendall Foundation um, and others, I believe, uh, to secure additional funding as might be necessary for that feasibility study. Thank you. And just a reminder that it was not the position of the delegation that we were going to fund that $10,000 up front. It was to become a collaborative effort where we'd be part of that funding, which is just a little further explanation on that. And thank you for both for attending in my stay. The, uh, I'd like to move on to the agenda item. Um, and I'm not quite sure because I have it written as several different items, uh, senior housing, elderly housing, um, discussion. Um, I'd like to mention that when I had formed the agenda that I had provided 10 minutes for this. I'm expecting this to be an overview I'm not expecting to come out. I believe that there's going to be a request for funding. Uh, I don't expect we're going to get to that today. That's why I did not uh, allow more time. I'd like to get an update where you are, what your proposal might be, and it is my wish that we would then discuss this further uh, at, our, at our next meeting. So I know you have a number of speakers. I see and um, I would just like the speakers knowing the enthusiasm in this subject um, if we could not repeat what's said previously and uh, with that Mr. Council would you like to be the first speaker? Thank you Mr. Chairman. I just text you uh, my brief is very brief. Uh, uh, I just text you a copy for your records that you can uh, put in the verbatim record. Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the uh, delegation, my colleagues have asked that I present to you our request for this body's concurrence with the Board of Commissioners' unanimously adopted action of August 9, 2017. To wit, the Board of Commissioners support allocating an amount not to exceed $10,000 from the 2017 Mountain View Nursing Home budget for the purpose of conducting a countywide feasibility study for assisted living facilities for community elders. These funds will be used as a 50% match from other sources. Further, that the Board of Commissioners will seek concurrence from the county convention delegation, which is the purpose of us being here at this time. This past April 17th in North Conway, the Gibson Center for Senior Citizens hosted an important forum to discuss the assisted living needs of our current population of county elders as well as the promised forecast of an increase in that population in the population of our aging citizenry. Immediately following that forum, the Commission has directed County Administrator Ken Robichaud together with our Mountain View Nursing Home Director Howie Chandler to develop a recommendation in order to move this issue further along. Many voices have spoken have been heard both at the forum and during the past four months that have passed while Howie has worked with others to gain a deeper understanding from a health care provider's perspective. Many voices continue to speak except one. As I've been following the emergence and the development of this need, I have not heard from the voices of any opposition. Now, I do not apply that there may not be some future opposition, 
but there is not one at this time that we can currently identify. That helps confirm the importance for the county to lead the way by further scrutinizing the need more intently with the expectation that we must determine the best way to pay for the need. That is why we ask at this time that the delegation join with the commissioners so that together we can work to provide the care our elders deserve and one that we proudly and with honor are responsible to provide. At this time, I would yield the remainder of my time to the many voices that serve to convince the commissioners to support investing as much as $10,000 as a 50 $10,000 as a 50% match for the purpose of conducting a countywide feasibility study for assisted living community for community uh, facilities for community elders. We ask the honorable delegation's concurrence. Thank you. I, I think we'll hold questions from the delegation uh, till we're done with this. Um, um, I have I have Howie as the uh, next speaker. Good morning again, members of the delegation. First of all, I'd emphasize that what we're looking for is a transfer of funds, not a supplemental appropriation. And and that's and we're talking about money that will be then be matched by, by others. To get clear what we're actually talking about is the money for the feasibility to assess whether or not what we think it makes sense actually makes sense so that you can actually make final decisions later based on facts and not conjecture. What we're Putting out there for consideration for a feasibility analysis is something that is countywide. It's not the southern part of the county, not the northern part of the county. It's for two separate initiatives, one in the Mount Washington Valley, looking at assisted living and possibly with an independent component, something in the range of 40 to 50 apartments. Here, we're talking about in addition to the Mountain View nursing home, to, to Mountain View, uh, in addition of about 40, 40 to 50 beds of two different kinds of assisted living, traditional assisted living and also a secure memory support, something that's very much needed. Um, others will speak to, to the actual need. The, what's different about this and why it's important for the county to be involved is we're not just talking about assisted living, we're talking about affordable assisted living, something on the order that would provide services to 50% of elders who are Medicaid eligible. This is not a need that's going to be picked up by the private enterprise side of things, and it's not something that, that even the not-for-profit world is looking at. They're taking the high end. We're looking at how do we keep one of our biggest resources, our elders, able to retire in our own communities, both in the southern tier, the Lakes region here, but also in the northern tier, the Mount Washington Valley, and in the Conway area. So at this point, I'm going to defer my time to George Cleveland, who is the executive director of uh, the Gifton Center, who can tell us some about the, the needs of what's going on. Sure. Thank you, George. Could you join us, please? So George, just let me come right up and say it's a pleasure to be on this side moderating a discussion with you. <laughs> <laughs> and that I will treat you with every much kindness as you do me. So please go ahead. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for, for giving me the time to be here. I am the director of the Gibson Center for Senior Services. Our catchment area is from Madison North to uh, Hart's location in Chatham. We do meals, meals on wheels, transportation, and social educational programs for seniors in that part of Carroll County. Of course, we even let people from the South come in too, uh, for some of those. The biggest question that we get at the Gibson Center on a regular basis after what's for lunch is, what am I going to do for assisted living for my name your family member? that and also some kind of, of memory care. Um, I don't have to tell any of you here, because you're all doing it the same way I am, because we're all getting older. It just happens to be that we've got these uh, astonishing number of baby boomers who are now getting older, and even though many of us baby boomers um, are spending fortunes on injections and pills and creams and things to pretend not to be older, chronic disease does not know we're doing that. Uh, within the next 20 to 30 years, the population in Carroll County that, or, or New Hampshire that's going to be uh, over 85 is going to be astronomical, and we're going to need the services um, to take care of our citizens. So that's why we're asking and taking a look at this now and not waiting until it's, it's too late. Um, because it's how we said, you know, we want, you know, there's initiatives looking to try and keep our young people in the county. We also want to keep our older citizens in the county as well. So that's why 
we can't do anything without a feasibility study. So um, that's not a, you know, the, the, the first step, and that's why we're respectfully requesting that you all take a look at this. And Thank you. That's my part. So my Thank you, John. Uh, Sue, if you would, please, and just identify yourself. And thank you for giving me a few minutes. Um, I totally appreciate that. I'm here representing the NWE Regional Collaborative as well as our Health Collaborative, which is a group of organizations in Mount Washington Valley representing healthcare. Um, and I'm, I'll be very brief because I know of the time constraints, but echoing the point, over maybe as high as 48%, 43% for sure of our population will be over 65 by 2030 in Carroll County, and that's huge. We are one of the oldest states. New Hampshire is the second oldest state in the nation, and Carroll County is one of the oldest counties. And that's probably not new information to anyone here. Um, just echoing again the need. Recently, by required by federal law, both Memorial and Huggins conducted a community health needs assessment, which um, is to look at, as well as the state, conducting a state health improvement plan. In all three of those, aging was identified as a high priority. Um, so we have, is, as the second oldest, as one of the oldest counties in Carroll County, we also have a unique problem in Carroll, unlike Coas County, that we really don't have that infrastructure of support. A lot of our residents have either moved from other areas, some have extended family, but many don't. So the need for some supportive services be, um, is, is really high. Um, we have, um, we do have people leaving this county because we're missing it. What we do have going well for our county is we have a couple great nursing homes. We have a high percentage of Medicaid in both the county nursing home and I know in Merriman House. Um, we have great home care. We are able to keep people at home on skilled services and long-term services as long as possible. We have uh, the Gibson Center with Meals on Wheels, again, another support to people at home as well as the social services. We do a lot of preventative type programs, falls management, advanced care planning, um, healthy aging, to be able to keep people safe and at home as long as possible, and as healthy as possible. What we are missing, though, is that assisted living. There is some work being done on looking at a day program as well, but the assisted living, that interim step between um, when someone needs a nursing home and someone can be independent at home is missing. Um, and just the last point I just want to emphasize is the need that this is caregiver support as well. And many of the caregivers in this county and across the nation are the unpaid family caregivers. Um, that is a higher increase, particularly in dementia, which is my particular area of expertise is what I did my doctorate in, and my passion is with aging. Um, they experience more illness, more chronic disease, more depression. Um, they have often end up with an earlier death um, and because of the strains of caregiving and that 24-7. And also, just the point that, we, that I want to emphasize too is, is the workforce. Many of these unpaid caregivers are still in the workforce, okay? So they're the daughters and the, and the sons and the family, extended family members. We already have a huge workforce challenge and then these are the people that are in their, in their work. So part of giving some more support to um, people is that you would increase um, presentism, so they're not in work thinking about what's going on with mom or dad who are they're trying to leave at home because there's no support services, or they decrease in some of the absenteeism. So those are some of those extra points that um, you know really speak to the need for some more supportive services to keep and support our elderly in this community and keep them being able to live here. And that's my encapsulated <laughs> version. Thank, thank you, so. No question. Thank you, so Bill. Questions? We'll, we'll, We'll have a little more discussion and we'll take some questions from you too. Thank you. Um, I would just like to, uh, number one, and that's those are our speakers. Were there other speakers that we could take another moment for, please? Hi, sorry. Um, I'm sorry, you are? Victoria Lurisi from the Mount Washington Valley Housing Coalition. Thank you, Victoria. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would just actually reiterate everything that Howie and Sue. Um, had said in George as well, but um, again, we are very supportive of this, um, this feasibility study and we hope you will consider it. But I would like to just talk as a personal level in terms of I've worked in the nursing industry for 20 years um, in my past life as a social worker, an assisted living administrator, and a director of social services and admissions for um, a nursing home facility. 
And one of the things is I'm very passionate about um, having an assisted living facility in our community because I've seen, had patients um, come to the facility for needing um, a skilled level of care for broken hip and to the point where they're not appropriate for nursing home care, but they really wanted to go home but weren't appropriate either there with the services, even though we have amazing services in this valley, again, they weren't able to keep them home safely. We are missing drastically That's that go-to step between being able to be at home with, with some services and then the long-term nursing care. Um, our aging population has built up the community that we live in. And working in the hospitality jobs, that's what a lot of our um, aging population has done through the years and has made our community the desti destination place that we all thrive in. Unfortunately, they were work we, our aging population has worked those hospitality jobs where their income is very limited and their social security checks are very limited. So we as a community really need to look at a way to be able to have them remain in our community but be able to afford it. And I think that's pretty much and thank then you. reiterate everything they said as well. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe that takes me through my uh, list of speakers for that discussion. Um, it's, it's my understanding, uh, Commissioner Council, that the board, the the commissioners has made a recommendation um, to transfer funds, $10,000. Um, I think probably the appropriate action at this point would be that uh, we ask the um, nursing home subcommittee to uh, meet ahead of our third quarter or at a time that makes sense to that uh, chairman um, to discuss this expenditure and this transfer. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I think I think we're fine yeah, without a motion. Um, my thought is we just ask ask uh, the group to uh, to vet the proposal and um, come up with you know answer you know make a recommendation back to the uh, to the delegation at the third quarter. It doesn't need to go to the delegation. The executive committee has that authority. Okay, we'll make a report and we'll, we'll go from there. But yeah, I mean, my hope is to have it done by that meeting, okay. our next but, meeting. But you have, all I'm saying is is that a transfer of $10,000 within mm -hmm. is, 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 can be handled by the Can be handled by the executive committee. Thank you. You are correct. No, I mean, we'd obviously like to report back. Yes. Representative McCartney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'd just like to make a short comment relative to this. Number one, there's two reasons I'm against it, 100% against it. And it is one, it is not a function of government. And the more things that we find that we will push on to the government, the more it's going to cost the taxpayers. And in that light, let me say this. Our nursing home started sometime in the 50s, 54, 56, somewhere along in there. So it's been in effect now for, what, 61 to 65, 66 years. You know how much it costs the county taxpayers to keep, not counting the cost of building, just the cost of operating, $600 million since its inception in the 60s. They lose, what's the budget for the nursing home? $20 million, $21 million? They make... They get back maybe half of that in revenue. The rest of it comes from the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And it's been going that they've never made a dollar. It's been going that way since its, 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 its inception. So I'm against it. Gentlemen, I wasn't really looking for a, a back and forth here, and I always appreciate the representative for saying what he believes. But there is ample opportunity, and I believe Mr. Representative Marsh, you're on this subcommittee. If you have something Thank else, you. please. Uh, can I speak now? Please. Uh, it, I agree with you, Frank, about it not being government's responsibility. However, I think we need to take into consideration that if uh, these people wind up in the nursing home, it's going to cost us considerably more money than if we can find a way of having assisted living at home or in some in intermediate facility that's less expensive than the nursing home. And so, therefore, it may ultimately cost us less money. Thank you. Representative Bottenberger, I'm going to come to the chair. I really... I, this is just, this has nothing to do with right or wrong, okay? I just want to make sure 
that when we look at the study, that we recognize that we are only facing approximately 25, a 25 year problem. That's the baby boomer. Generation X, which is behind them, as you know, we closed schools, we did all kinds of things because the population of Generation X is nowhere near the population of the baby boomers. So as, gener I think it's that. as Generation X is moving forward, okay, this group is, I'm not a boomer, I'm too, I'm too old to be a boomer. <laughs> but, um, They're checking out? Uh, yeah, they're, che they're checking out on the other end. So just make sure, if in fact this gets approved, that someone obtains the demographics of what is going on, in that we, we don't look at facilities to support a group of people that aren't going to be there for the length of time because the Generation X just isn't there. Um, I, uh, thanks for taking my comment. I would agree with what uh, Representative Marsh says, that it's sort of a pay now, pay later, and I think if we can keep people out of the nursing homes, it'll be far cheaper. And even cheaper than maybe, again, of course, being able to support people in aging in place. And with some of the Medicaid <coughs> waivers that will be uh, hopefully available to be able to support that, I, I would think that this committee should also be sure to look at how much we can do to, to help people even before the assisted living piece. Certainly if we ever go to block grants and Medicaid, uh, where we have to figure out how to be most efficient about that and we can't just put a bill in for the nursing home, uh, keeping people out of the nursing home and keeping even out of assisted living may be beneficial. So I would hope that that would be part of what the committee would work on as well. Thank you. Good comment. All right. Representative Black. Uh, just to, just to um, Representative Umberger's comment, I hope that would be part of the feasibility study is what she spoke about. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I, that was Thank what you. my Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, report and look forward to hearing what the subcommittee has uh, uh, going forward. Um, the, um, do, we have, do we have anything else under new business? Old business? Okay, sorry. Please. Yeah, you just, I wanted to go back to what uh, Representative Cordelli brought up before. I didn't want to bring it up at that time because I thought it wasn't appropriate. But it, regarding the 500 uh, labor violations, do we have any um, comment from the county and the commissioners about that? Could we just hear their thoughts, please? Sure. Do you figure um, you, you have um, 300 employees? Okay, and each employee who doesn't get the right pay or, or um, you know, is paid the, the following pay period, you know, so, so that's actually, you know, it's probably about two instances, um, and you have 250 employees, that, that's 500 violations right there. So they count each individual person as a violation. Good place. Uh, is this in the range of normal for a, for a county to have that many violations? And isn't there a way to prevent those violations? That's what we're doing now. I mean, th this goes back to uh, uh, early fifth, early twenty fifth, uh, early twenty fifteen uh, until uh, September of twenty sixteen. Okay. So we're looking at what we we're already working to not have these yes. problems. Yes, okay. we, Thank you. we have a plan in place and we're submitting that as well. Thank you. Thank you. What, what happened is unconscionable. Shouldn't have happened once, it happened twice. They've taken the corrective actions and uh, is it normal for other places, other businesses, other counties? I would say the answer is no. Thank you. First time, uh, just, just more of a comment. Uh, I'm disheartened that the new commissioners have to go and, and go through this again instead of taking our county forward to the next level. Um, to still have to deal with issues and things from the past creeping up into the present. And I hope that you know, moving forward we'll
we're going to tackle all these obstacles to make sure that this, this is the best county in the state. Right there. Free. As you all know, if you've been in this business and government for very long, oftentimes it's three steps forward and two back. <laughs> we'll continue to press forward. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. And thank you for what's, what the, the improvements we have been and we are making. Before you adjourn, if I might. I have other things to do before we adjourn, but go, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to state how enjoyable it has been working with members of the delegation on the different committees. And I think that the commissioners and the people here on the grounds and working with the delegation, I, I find it a very enjoyable experience in my first six, seven months of August because I haven't done this much. And three steps back and two steps forward, or whatever he said, is not comfortable to me. I'm used to going forward, but we're working on it. I'm Thank you. Thank questions. you, Madam Chairman. I, I uh, appreciate your comments, and I can tell you collectively we're not ready for the big group hug, but this, del <laughs> this, this delegation is very pleased with the budget process we went through and the willing cooperation between the delegation and the commissioners. And I, I, it just speaks volumes of this group of people and how they're working. So, Representative McCarthy, just one other comment. Yes. I haven't had to write a letter to the editor in over a year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We need to. Um, I, I had received a letter from the town, and I apologize for not bringing it up earlier. Uh, town of Albany uh, Office of Selectmen had sent a letter to us. We'll make it part of the record. Um, Deer County Delegation Commissioners, the Albany, New Hampshire Board of Selectmen have voted August 16th uh, to unanimously uh, support the funding of the study to determine as to whether building a new assisted living facilities in Carroll County, the Mount Washington Valley, and or future expansion of the Mountain View Nursing Home would be advised and or feasible. As the population of Carroll County ages, uh, we all agree now is time to begin planning for future and therefore ask the county uh, delegation to support this funding and it is signed by all three members of their delegation. Thank them for that. Um, I'd like, I believe new business, old business has been attended to. We move into convention. Make a motion to move into convention. Second. Second. Moved and seconded to move into convention. Um, Melissa, if I could ask what items we need. We have the uh, $70,500 from the registry surcharge account for archival of records, the uh, May 22nd delegation meeting minutes, and acceptance of the two grants applied for by the House of Corrections. So I move that, I, I will move that as a motion. No, you won't. Okay, I would look, I would look for... Yeah. Um, since, since we do not have unanimous agreement on all of them, okay, you want to do as individual? I think they need to be done as individuals so that the, the real thing can be recorded. Sure. Although, you know, I'm waiting for the minutes to come back. I will, I will move the minutes of the May 26th meeting. Okay. Thank you. I'll second. Moved and seconded the minutes of the May 22nd meeting. If you're in favor of that, it's signified by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion on accepting the minutes is unanimous. I will move the 70,500 for the uh, register of the register of the. Thank you. I a second. Second. Second, second by Marsh. Um, if you are in favor of the $70,000 transfer, you signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, nay. 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 One, two, three. three. Like Como and no. Nelson. 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 Thank you. And, and then the third one was uh, the motion on the grants. Thank you. I will make that motion. Second. Second by Marsh. If you're in favor of the acceptance of the grants as specified earlier, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed?
those nay, uh, motion passed unanimously. Representative Umberger, do you have a second motion? Yes, I move to come out of convention. A motion made to come out of convention, seconded by Representative Knirk. Sure. <laughs> if you're in favor of that, you'll signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion is unanimous. Um, that concludes our business. Uh, take public input at this point. Someone likes to address the delegation. Before we yes. do that, um, do you have any time frame for when? Thank, thank you for saying that. Thank you. Um, can our official third quarter reports will be ready at what time, what date? If you don't have that, if I you could get that, that back to me so, yeah, can, well, as as I, as I so we can schedule a meeting well in advance of that. Question. I just, I just think that we have some things that are going on out of this meeting. Right. That it might be a good idea to hold on before November. Yeah. I agree. Which is probably when the third quarter will be Okay. And so. Um, and I just, I just ask that we do that, and I'm going to be on November And it's a time. So that's a good time to hold it if nobody wants me here. <laughs> so, plus, if we could, if we could look at the last week or last, or last two weeks of September for a Monday meeting. I think that's a great idea because we do have a lot of other information to handle. Would you like me to poll the members, and or do you want to set a meeting tonight? Let's let's look at let's look at those two dates. And okay. I I don't know what my travel plans are. I leave out of state too. So. Uh, are we talking about third quarter? No, September. No, we're we're, we're probably gonna have a meeting ahead of time to discuss oh, okay. these things, and then you'll let us know what the third quarter uh, is. Probably October twenty third or around there, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. The last, the last two Mondays in September. The 18th or 25th of September. Eight, eight, eight. And then we'll be looking at the, the, the end last of October. Monday or the last Monday? 18th or 25th. Oh, September. September. And then we will be looking, the third quarter report should be done, uh, be ready. October 23rd. So October. we'll look at the, we'll look at, post that too, we'll look at the last week in October. Last Monday. Okay. Any other new or old business before we take public comment? Yeah. Is there a question, is there anything on the horizon for additional grants? Uh, yes. I know the sheriff has one, yeah. right? Right, and we'll have to have a grant committee meeting, and I was going to discuss that with you after. Okay. Okay. Did the sheriff run away? I need to check. With that, any public comment? Mm -hmm. Please. I'm a little confused on your position on wood. It sounded like you guys wanted to get out of the wood business, and now you're wondering where the wood is. Um, I, I'm happy to answer that question for you. My, my understanding of the direction of the delegation when we finished last time was we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 cords of wood. And the, our understanding was that public works would work post haste to turn that into campfire wood. We have certain periods of the year that aren't as active as others, and that was supposed to be done, and they had a contract, uh, an agreement with the park service that they were going to accept um, a much larger volume than where we're at. My question in asking that is, how soon will we be done with our wood and out of the business? It was, I hope there wasn't anything in my voice that led you to believe that I endorse going back into buying log length wood. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Sure. And then the other clarification is, uh, I'd be looking for is from um, Representative McCarthy. He said he was against the, what was he against the study of the, uh, or moving the transfer for the $10,000 to study the uh, issue of uh, elderly aging, or is he just, or is he against the idea of of having assisted living be run by the government. What I said was it is not a function of government. I'm all for the housing, but somebody, some capitalist should come up with money and say, look, I think that's a good idea. We need it. I can make a buck out of it. I'm going to build something. It's not a, good, a function of government. That's what I'm against. So you'd be against the transfer as well as the concept. 
Say again? You'd be against the transfer. You'd vote against the transfer. To, oh, we, to we, if, if I could get in between there, we haven't got to the point where the representative is making a vote at this time. No, we didn't vote on it. Right. right. Anyone else? Public input? I'm public, but could the uh, members of the nursing home committee hold up so we can try to set a meeting? Please. Yep. Can do that. All right. With that, thank you, uh, motion. No. Um, uh, uh, no. Please. Yeah. Um, since the newest member of the delegation did not come to the meeting today for whatever reason. She's traveling. She's traveling. She's traveling. That's, that's fine. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, has she been assigned to any committees yet? And does she know that? I, I have had a conversation with him. Uh, when she found out we were going to meet to tell me that she wasn't able to attend. We had a nice long conversation, wanted to make sure we had all the contacts and so forth. Uh, put her in touch with Melissa so that we had all of that under control. And um, she's out of town traveling for a period of time and uh, committee assignments then will be discussed at that time. She wanted to be kept, in, kept informed and uh, she was very enthusiastic. All right. Motion to adjourn. Um, Representative Bumberger has a motion to adjourn, and that's been seconded by Representative McCarthy. And all those in favor will be signified by saying aye. Uh, to approve that the vote was unanimous. Thank you. Can we do that meeting after the next delegation meeting? Be sometime in October then, early no, October. No, September, last two weekends of September, last two Mondays of October. Okay, it'll be either late September or early October.